This is CBN News Watch. It is Monday, November 30th. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, tensions rising between Israel and Iran after the assassination of an Iranian nuclear scientist. Iran blames Israel. We're going to bring you the story from Jerusalem. President Donald Trump maintaining there was fraud in the election, promising he will continue to fight in court. A major victory for religious freedom at the U.S. Supreme Court as the justices strike down coronavirus restrictions on worship services. And 2020 has been a very difficult year for millions around the world. We're going to show you how God is at work, though, using the pandemic to reach people with the gospel of salvation. All those stories and more are ahead in today's edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to begin this half hour with Iran blaming Israel and promising revenge after the assassination of its chief nuclear scientist. As Chris Mitchell now reports from Jerusalem, the killing increases tension in the Middle East and it is putting some in Washington on edge. The assassination took place just outside of Tehran. An Iranian journalist citing regime officials said the ambush began with a car bomb and then a 12-member squad opened fire on the three cars with the nuclear scientist and his bodyguards. But one top Iranian official accused Israel of using remote electronic devices to carry out the assassination. While no one has claimed responsibility for the attack, Iran's foreign minister Javad Zarif blamed Israel, and Iran's President Rouhani pledged retaliation. At the right time, the relevant officials will respond to this crime. An Iranian newspaper suggested Iran attack the Israeli port city of Haifa in order to inflict heavy casualties. On Sunday, the IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Avi Kohavi visited Israel's northern border and said, Our message is clear. We will remain fully prepared against any manifestation of aggression against us. Prime Minister Netanyahu specifically mentioned the chief scientist after revealing how Mossad covertly stole Iranians' atomic secrets. This is how Dr. Mohsen Fakhizadeh, head of Project Ahmad, put it. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. Amos Yadlin, former chief of Israel's military intelligence, says Iran has twin tracks toward a nuclear bomb. The public side, where they enrich uranium, under watch by the UN, and a secret military program headed by Fakhri Saadi. The damage to the covert Weapon, weaponization program is huge. No doubt that he was the core source of authority, knowledge, and organization of this program. Yadlin sees two main options for Iranian leaders. Wait for a potential Biden administration or retaliate now. They can use their proxies, Hezbollah, the Houthis in Yemen, or their Shia militia in Syria or Iraq. And they can go to an extreme uh, step which is launching missiles from, uh, from Iran. Biden's supporters of the former vice president blasted the assassination. Former Obama CIA director John Brennan tweeted, this was a criminal act and highly reckless. It risks lethal retaliation and a new round of regional conflict. Iranian leaders would be wise to wait for the return of responsible American leadership on the global stage and to resist the urge to respond against any perceived culprits. For now, the region is waiting and watching for any response, and if it puts the Middle East on the brink of war. And Chris Mitchell joins us now from Jerusalem. So, Chris, what problems does a Biden administration face given the assassination? Well, Ephraim, actually, they face a lot of problems. Even before this assassination, the Biden administration uh, faced an Iran that was really resistant to even re-signing the uh, JCOPA, the Iranian nuclear deal. They actually wanted reparations uh, from the United States for the last couple of years of the sanctions and, uh, and uh, economic relief from they want that. You know, what this does, Ephraim, it really highlights the difference in, uh, in policy between the Trump administration and the Biden administration. The Trump administration came into office, they confronted Iran, they got out of the Iranian nuclear deal, uh, they imposed economic sanctions, uh, really was a confrontation about trying to stop and blunt uh, the spread of terror that, uh, that Iran had been spreading throughout the Middle East, as well as their nuclear program. On the other hand, the Obama and Biden administration for uh, eight years, they negotiated that deal. They gave Iran billions of dollars in, uh, in relief, and uh, they entered the deal that many say was flawed from the very beginning. Uh, so that is uh, really uh, diametrically opposed policies of both 
the, uh, the Trump administration and a potential Biden administration. Can you give us insight to electronic devices and their connection to this assassination? Yeah, it's interesting, Ephraim, because there's actually two scenarios right now. Originally, it came out that there was a 12-man ambush uh, hit squad on the uh, the convoy of the Iranian nuclear physicist, and actually uh, buttressed by another 50. They had 62 members in this uh, in this squad that was uh, that had this assassination. But then today, uh, it came out that the uh, Iranian officials say it was all remote. It was something that Israel did, but it came uh, remotely. Now, Israel has uh, experience in that. In fact, in Gaza, they've had several targeted assassinations uh, remotely by drones. Uh, also, uh, just a few uh, weeks ago in the Armenian-Azerbaijan war, that was fought mainly with, or I should say largely, with Iranian drones. So they have experience by that. But there is one uh, idea, Ephraim, that some people uh, have thought about, is that maybe this idea of electronic uh, warfare was misinformation because uh, Iran doesn't want to, uh, their own population as well as the world to believe that there were 62 members of this hit squad that not only provided logistics, but they were actually on the ground with uh, with on the ground real time intelligence to make uh, to carry out this assassination. Uh, so we'll we'll see exactly how this plays out. But there's two separate scenarios of how this assassination took place. Chris, your reporting mentions Haifa as a potential target for Iran. Where exactly uh, is Haifa in that, and has Iran ever executed a strike like that? Well, uh, for those that have been here to Israel, uh, Haifa is up in the northern part of, uh, of Israel, not too far from Lebanon, right on the uh, post. It's uh, right on the port. It's one of the largest ports uh, of uh, Israel, and it's actually not too far from Hezbollah missiles. And has uh, Iran ever done this before? Last September 2019, we were actually in Riyadh, uh, the capital of uh, Saudi Arabia, when Iran carried out a major strike against one of Saudi Arabia's uh, largest oil refinery facility. They used drones, they used missiles, took about 18 minutes, but it devastated that refinery. So they have a lot of experience in this. And as we said uh, in our report, Amos Yadlin, who's the former head of Israeli intelligence, said that is one possibility that Iran may, may employ. Uh, and if that happens, uh, we'll, see. we'll see what happens here in the Middle East. What would the ramifications of an attack like that be? Well, Ephraim, we really don't know, but if there's something major against, uh, you know, a port like Haifa, one of Israel's major ports, uh, it could lead to a, a regional war. I mean, that's would probably be the uh, the ultimate uh, ramifications. Uh, you know, it could be uh, Hezbollah has always been a proxy by Iran on uh, in, in Lebanon with about 150,000 missiles. Right now, some of those are precision guided, and they could hit, uh, you know, targets within. Uh, Haifa, for example, which has a nuclear facility, uh, it has an oil refinery, oil oil storage facility. So ramifications could be extreme. Back in 2006, when we were here, Ephraim, a small ambush on the Lebanese-Israeli border led to one of Israel's longest uh, wars. So we'll see what happens. All right, Chris Mitchell reporting for us from Jerusalem. Thank you so much for your time. Back here at home, President Donald Trump speaking out on the election, still maintaining it was rigged against him and vowing to continue to fight in the courts. But so far, the battle is not going well. Dale Hurd is on the story. In his first interview since the election, President Trump says he remains convinced the 2020 presidential election was stolen. This election was rigged. This election was a total fraud, and it continues to be as they hide. And the problem we have, we go to judges and the people don't want to get involved. And the president's legal team and its allies have now lost by one count at least 31 cases contesting the election or alleging fraud. The bad news is piling up. A recount in Wisconsin requested and paid for by the Trump campaign again shows a Biden victory in the state. An appeals court in Pennsylvania turned down a request to not certify the election results, while the state Supreme Court rejected a motion to toss mail-in ballots. However, a group of Pennsylvania Republican lawmakers did announce Saturday they'll introduce a resolution calling on state leaders to withdraw certification of the vote and appoint a new slate of electors to cast the state's electoral college votes. Despite all the allegations of election fraud, Trump's former cybersecurity chief told 60 Minutes 
The election was the most secure in American history. We can go on and on with all the farcical claims that uh, alleging uh, interference in the 2020 election, but the proof is in the ballot. But the president pointed to victories in congressional races and state legislatures as evidence that the numbers aren't adding up. Well, look, we're supposed to lose seats. We didn't lose one seat and we gained many and others were leading and others. The Senate remains up for grabs with two Georgia races yet to be decided. Despite harsh criticism of the Republican Secretary of State and Governor, the president said he will campaign in Georgia and is urging supporters not to boycott the runoff elections. So I'll be going there on Saturday night and maybe I'll go twice. It's very important that we win those races. Joe Biden's biggest problem at the moment is a fractured right foot, injured while playing with his dog. He'll likely need to wear a walking boot for several weeks. President Trump tweeted, get well soon. And the president says he will leave office if the Electoral College elects Biden, but he's still holding out hope. Is there a path the to victory? Dominion. Yeah, uh, I hope so, for the good of the country. It, it will take a brave judge or a brave legislature. In the meantime, the presidential transition process is going forward as Joe Biden and Kamala Harris get their first intelligence briefing today. The Electoral College is set to convene two weeks from today, December 14. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Coming up, the coronavirus has closed many schools, but a new report says remote learning is not working. We're going to have that story for you when we come back. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? Get the top political news and analysis from Washington on Faith Nation. Tonight at 6 Eastern, only on the CBN News Channel. The coronavirus has closed many schools, so they are opting for remote learning instead. Now a new study says the method is not working. With us to talk more about that is Dan Andros of FaithWire.com. So Dan, what school system did this look at and what did it find? Yeah, this happened, uh, Ephraim, in uh, Fairfax, which is Virginia's largest a school district, and it's a study from the Office of Research and Strategic Improvement. And they found some pretty stunning results, and stunning is not in a good way. 
uh, the number of F grades actually spiked 83% uh, year over year. Last year, uh, F scores made up about 6% of, of all scores among students uh, in person last year. Uh, this year, that number has almost doubled to 11 uh, percent, and the F uh, scores could be seen uh, as, as an increase among all the different uh, student demographic groups. Uh, but perhaps the most concerning part of this study, Ephraim, is that um, the the increase is uh, most profoundly uh, impacting students with disabilities. There was a 111 uh, percent increase there. Uh, so very concerning that we're failing. Uh, not only just students in general, but uh, you know the most vulnerable uh, among us in our in our school systems. And uh, experts also say that this isn't just a drop. This isn't just well, we've seen we saw a little spike here. They're calling this uh, unprecedented and historic drop just year over year. And to give you an idea, they studied English uh, and math were the subjects that they looked at. Uh, and the likelihood of passing uh, English uh, an English class decreased by forty percent. Uh, for all students, and the likelihood of passing a math class uh, decreased by 30 percent. Um, and it just showed that 35 percent of all Fairfax students are underperforming in math, and 39 percent are underperforming in English. So some very uh, concerning results uh, from the at-home learning in Fairfax, Virginia. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm seeing that play out anecdotally in my neighborhood as well. What was the Fairfax school's response to this? Yeah, the uh, the superintendent Scott uh, Braybrand, uh, he said that you know he obviously was very concerned about this and said we're working as swiftly as possible to repair repair the damage. End quote. Uh, and he he did try to say that um, you know students who perform well are still performing pretty well, and he kind of tried to isolate it to students who typically may struggle a little bit with school. Maybe it's not doesn't come as easy to them. He's saying that it's more profoundly impacting uh, them. Uh, but never, nevertheless, they've got some work to do as they quote, phase back into uh, in-person learning. How do um, the public and health officials view closing down the schools? Yeah, well, we're seeing more and more uh, data emerge, Ephraim, that, you know, over, we've had months to study this uh, now, now that students have, you know, started school again over the last couple months. And, uh, you know, in Fairfax, obviously, we see the results there. Uh, Washington, D.C.'s public schools um, have reported substantial reductions in, in kindergarten students meeting their expectations there. Chicago public schools have seen drastic drops as well. Uh, we're seeing test scores, you know, lower across the board. So uh, a lot of negative impacts over a couple of months has parents and, and communities really concerned. Uh, when it comes uh, to schools, are they generally considered low risk environments? Yeah, well, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, seems to believe so. He actually just said over the weekend, you know, ur urging uh, the government to close the bars and keep the schools open. Uh, he actually said that there's growing research to show that COVID-19 among children, uh, the spread of it was significantly lower uh, than that of uh, older demographics. So he's saying we should be focusing on places that uh, seem to spread it more, which he says are bars and restaurants, and we should focus on that. Uh, and not focus on the schools. And, and obviously, we're seeing the detrimental effects uh, it's having to keep these schools closed. Indeed. Dan Andros of FaithWire.com. Dan, thank you so much for your time. I want to remind you at home that you can learn more about important issues in our culture today by watching FaithWire this evening at 930 Eastern. You can find that on the CBN News Channel. Still ahead, a major victory for religious freedom at the U.S. Supreme Court. We're going to look at the court's important decision to strike down some coronavirus restrictions on worship services and why one justice said the Constitution cannot be put away and forgotten even during a pandemic. We've got the story for you right after this. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bow stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a Christian perspective. 
the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times best-selling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection. In Protect Your Brain, get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, Get the DVD, protect your brain, and get it today. A major victory for religious freedom at the U.S. Supreme Court last week as it struck down some coronavirus restrictions on worship services in New York. As Paul Strand now reports, it's a new direction for the high court. In previous cases dealing with COVID and religious freedom, the court was letting government slap restrictions on places of worship. But now it appears Amy Coney Barrett has solidified a constitutionalist majority. In a five to four ruling, the justice has declared, even in a pandemic, the Constitution cannot be put away and forgotten. The court ruled New York's tight restrictions on attendance at religious services strike at the very heart of the First Amendment's guarantee of religious liberty. Justice Neil Gorsuch railed against Governor Andrew Cuomo's rules that find so many secular activities essential and religious activities not so. Gorsuch wrote, the governor is remarkably frank about this. In his judgment, laundry and liquor, travel and tools are all essential, while traditional religious exercises are not. That is exactly the kind of discrimination the First Amendment forbids. On Fox News, leading podcaster Ali Beth Stuckey commented, What we saw in the case of Cuomo is that he was discriminating against these religious institutions in a way that he was not discriminating against secular institutions like bike shops and other places. First Amendment rights are much more powerful than the right uh, for somebody to shop. Among those who disagreed with the ruling, Chief Justice John Roberts. In dissenting, Roberts wrote, it is a significant matter to override determinations made by public health officials. The New York Times' Paul Krugman tweeted, the first major decision from the trump pack court, and naturally, it will kill people. And Cuomo poo-pooed the ruling, saying he's already lightened the restrictions, at least for now. It's irrelevant from... Uh, any practical impact. Evangelist Franklin Graham noted President Trump's influence in remaking the court and protecting religious freedom, tweeting, I'm thankful for President Trump's appointment of three conservative SCOTUS justices who ruled in favor of churches and against government overreach in the state of New York. Now it'll be interesting to see if this new majority also sides with churches in California and New Jersey who are appealing to the court for relief from strict COVID restrictions. This ruling for churches and against New York's governor has given some relief to religious conservatives. They're worried a possible Biden administration could threaten their religious liberties on a number of fronts. They're a little more hopeful now that at least the U.S. Supreme Court will be on their side. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from the Supreme Court. Coming up, 2020 has been a difficult year, but there is some good news. We're going to show you how God used the pandemic to reach souls for salvation. We've got the story for you when we come back. I am Regent's first ROTC graduate student. from Graham. Welcome to Studio 5. Get on it. All that's new and now in the world of uplifting entertainment. Celebrity interviews. There's a higher contribution that I will make. Musical performances. I'll give you my best praise. Plus movie and TV news. See it and be uplifted. On Studio 5. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern at CBN.com forward slash Studio 5. 
How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers. But even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash buildabettergut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash buildabettergut for your free copy. 2020 has been rough for many, but there is still some good news below the headlines, like the great quarantine revival that brought people all around the world to Jesus Christ through the Internet, as God moved on people's hearts during this global pandemic. Evangelist Nick Call said more than 100,000 people made known their desire to put their faith in Jesus Christ, mainly through two-week Easter events hosted by his, his, his evangelistic ministry called Pulse. An estimated 1.7 million people in 167 countries took part through YouTube and Facebook, responding to the gospel call through email, text, and international call centers. Before we go, it's time for your Monday motivation. And today I leave you with this thought as we enter into this unique holiday season. Look around, look ahead, and look up. The hand of God is at work at every turn. Now is the time to make time to see his hand in time. With that word, make today a marvelous Monday. And be sure to do that on purpose. That's going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to remind you, you can always watch more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. And you can do that at any time. You can also find our stories online at any time at CBNNews.com. We would love to hear from you. Let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. Newswatch at CBN.com is the email address. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, make this a marvelous Monday. We'll see you right back here, same time tomorrow.